The Heb Kelp Festival 2011 with Seth Lakeman, who is your third time here, isn't it? It is, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Third time lucky. Third time, third time, <laughs> <laughs> third time on the main stage. Yeah. Other, every other time you've been in the bar. Yeah, it? I know, working our way up, you see. Yeah, yeah I came and did some open mic nights first yeah. and then yeah. uh, built, built my way up. No, it's a great festival. Yeah, it's really good. Always uh, creates such a, a brilliant atmosphere, so it's good to be back. And I think everyone has to work hard to get here, actually, don't they? It's, it's, it takes yeah. some effort. <laughs> uh, six flights for us, all really? the way down in the southwest. Yeah, yeah. Um, three coming up, three going back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all worth it, though. Yes. 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 No, it's, yes. it's yeah. great. Yeah. Um, you're writing some new material at the moment, aren't you? Pretty yeah, pretty now. much mixing a new record. Uh, quite different this one. I've been uh, collecting stories for quite a long time, and uh, yeah, it's gone. It's gone very well. Um, it's going to be called the Tales from the Bower House. I've been recording it in this heritage centre called Morwellum Quay, just um, just on the corner of Dartmoor there, in the Tamar Valley, and it's really all about prof professions of the past, blacksmiths, carpenters, stonemasons, chief distillers. Um, you, uh, yeah. I had to get that one in there. The, yeah, yeah. It's a guy Took a about, research yeah, guy, of it, yeah. Yeah, a guy writing, um, making cider. Um, there's all sorts of songs there. Um, and yeah, really happy about it. I've made it on my own in this um, in this workshop, and just tried to get the uh, get the true sound of the room. So um, yeah, it's quite a conceptual record, and it seems to have it seems to have worked out. I'm quite oh, happy yeah. with it. Yeah. Is it going back a bit to where you started, kind of? Th you know, with the yeah, first much, albums. Yeah, yeah. I know. You know, everyone says you're recording his, his um, kitchen kind of thing, but mm. I mean, it's. Maybe that's a bit of a myth, but... <laughs> now, back to the same sort of principles that I originally enjoy um, <laughs> uh, creating. So, yeah, pretty much everything played by myself and layered in a way and written subject matter in a way that, that I kind of like rather than being influenced by other people. <laughs> oh, right. So it's <laughs> so quite a solo album, then. If you're yeah. yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. Um, it's going to be a weird one to tour and try and, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> try and come up with all those sounds. But... Um, no, it's it's something I've been wanting to do for a while, and it's 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 really worked out. I mean, it, it's quite a dark record. It's similar to say Kitty J, I would say, um, but yeah, I, I guess it's mixing stage, so we'll wait and no, see. Yeah. I mean, is there a sense of a, there's a bit more freedom now with the when you're on a, a major label? There's always a demand for a specific. You've got to fit a niche. You've got to fit a demand for right singles or whatever. Whereas now you call the shots. So well, the pressure's off immediately. I think because there's a big business behind you. You know, no, no matter what you're selling, whether it's music or whether it's anything else, um, you, you've got the pressure of being ha able to market it to a, to a number of people. And I think in order to do that, you have to compromise. Mm. People say you don't, but uh, unfortunately you do. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. And that's part of part of what you do but um, I think it's it's liberating for me to be able to just make a record in a way that I feel that people enjoy you know and, and the, the people who have enjoyed what I've done to this point I think will, will be into this. Will I'm that sure. mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they will, I mean, is that, will that mean a different scale of gigs, smaller venues or? I think we I, I've been, I did a tour with a trio um, just in April last year and it, it was something that was really I really enjoyed doing as well, getting a lot of the older songs and bringing them back to life. Um, and still with the same guys, you know, I don't think the tour is necessarily going to change, it's just the way things are written, the way the songs are approached maybe will change and just develop, I think, just moving forward really. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, your songs always have, you know, the way you do Kitty J now is a million miles away from where it was when you started, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> I guess it is, yeah. I listened back to it um, the other day and it's, yes, yeah, that was the that was the kind of experiment of, of recording, layering things and then putting the vocal on top. So, um, yeah, it's much more dancey in the stomp box and it's much more driving, I think, mm. as a sound now. But I play in a very different way than I did six years ago, you know, I mean... It, all over this new record, the viola is just digging away, and it's kind of it runs through right the heart, the whole of Tales from the Barrow House. So it's 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 a quite a distinctive sound that one. Dirty viola. <laughs> <laughs> the way to go. Yeah, that's the way to go. Do you, do you think there's there's a bit of uh, the folk world is is a slightly odd one in that it's quite small. So for someone that has a ongoing longer career, can you reinvent yourself, or do you have to? Look at different way directions to take it, and you can, uh, you can. I don't think you can ever actually reinvent yourself completely in the no, folk world, can you? Because it's 
everyone knows what's he doing yeah, yeah, you know yeah, yeah. it's that they but you can always tweak it and pull it in a different way yeah i think it, as long as there's an honesty about what you're doing i think that's really at the roots of what this genre should be um and it has to be honest uh and real so i think in that way you can you can change and develop what you're doing in any in any way in any direction so um i think with that in mind you know i i you, i think in a, in a way you can pull it back or you can move forward and it, it, you know in the next project i might add you know yeah. seven eight musicians and just see see what happens and get a big band together who knows but um yeah i think it's all just about experimenting with subject matter and sound well yeah your songwriting i mean you know you haven't exhausted exhausted Dartmoor yet <laughs> no no crumbs is, there's so many uh, so many songs to, to dig up and, and just people to write about. So, do you? F I mean, because what you're doing, you're you're writing modern folk songs that are going back and putting yourself in the mind of someone in the 18th, 17th, 16th century. Mm -hmm. You know, careers and where they felt. Mm. That's surely a harder thing than actually going finding a tune and lyrics from Cecil Sharp House that you know go back to that time. Uh, well, yeah, I mean. There's certainly a uh, you know a lyrical creativity to that. Uh, there's no doubt when you're when you're actually writing a song. I spend hours and days and weeks of my time going through books, coming up with phrases, coming up with ideas, coming up with people and places to write about. And I do get quite obsessive when I'm in that place, as my girlfriend would tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know that's something I enjoy. I like the process of songwriting. I really do. Uh, as much as I enjoy putting um, traditional lyrics to um, to music, you know, I was chatting to Nick Jones, who, who doesn't live too far from us, and I was chatting away to him about how he put together his records. And you know, it's there's there's a real uh, talent to be able to put traditional songs to 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 a contemporary tune. You know, that that that, that is another talent in itself. I mean, they're different they're different processes. So um, I I approach them in a different way. Anyway. Mm. Yeah. And it's those little lyrical twists that you get in that work well which I guess they sound very off the cuff but I bet they're quite hard to it's quite hard. pull I mean, in you know the simplest songs are the hardest to write I think as anyone would say but hooks are hard to write lyrically hooks are hard to write uh, musically um, musically and lyrically to, to, to gel them together yeah it's a tough thing it's a tough thing how do you ever, so right let's stop let's finish how do you ever actually get to that sometimes, point well, someone else do have to do it sometimes for you? you need someone else yeah 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 I think Generally, you you need someone else to at least give you confidence to say no that that's that's complete, stop there because you, you become a muso on it or or you, you feel it's incomplete because it needs needs more lyrics other verses needs to extend itself and yeah. so um, in that way it's uh, it's a difficult decision. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It seems to work well because this will be album number five. Yeah 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 yeah. 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 So uh, and hoping to get it out. Uh, early part of November. Oh, that's, right. that's the that's, plan. Yeah. I mean, because there's not too much we have to get together in order to get it out. It's just literally mixing it, mastering it, and then it's pretty much complete. And you got to tour in <laughs> December. Yes, so, yeah. we're, we're yeah. back out in December yeah. with with the guys, and yeah, I mean, we we're enjoying touring a lot, and we're going out to Europe a lot, which is mainland Europe. So um, that's a lot of fun for us to go out yeah. to Germany and. You've got a big fan base in Germany, haven't you? It's going well, yeah. yeah. It's going really well out there, yeah. We go back two or three times a year now, so, yeah. Any festivals? Or? Yeah, we just came back from Rudelstadt. Um, it was a great festival. We did about 3,000 people, and um, it was a big step for us. It's like the Cambridge Folk, Fe Folk Festival for, for Germany, and so it was an important one to get right, yeah. yeah. Probably the most important festival this year, almost, for us, oh, you right, know, yeah. certainly yeah. In, in that area of the world. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, and thankfully it went all right. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that can make or break you, they say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're only as good as your last performance, and if it's not to your audience at a festival, it's even more important. Isn't it? it is, yeah, yeah, no, it's very important. So yeah, that's good. No, it's fantastic. Look forward to hearing the new album. Good luck with the tour in December, and good luck on the main stage over there. There it is, which, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we could hear you sound checking earlier on. It sounded yes, okay. Yeah. It's a big tent. Yeah. Massive tent. Several thousand people. Yeah, yeah, that's what they say. <laughs> you should warm it up as well, which it's not raining either. So it's, <laughs> no, it's all right. Yeah. It's nice. No, it's, it's very pleasant up here. Yeah. Yeah, it's lovely. Well, thanks, sir. And look forward to seeing you later in the year. Cool. Cheers. Thank you.